It's easy to blame AI for replacing you, but what if you are using the wrong methods to land remote developer jobs? Tired of being ghosted, rejected, or maybe losing out in front of AI? I will show you a proven way to land high-paying developer jobs. I will teach you how to stand out, target well-paying companies worldwide, avoid scams, and ace interviews without wasting any time on outdated advice. So stay until the end because I'll reveal a powerful trick that makes companies chase you instead of the other way around. There are a few things that I want to mention throughout this video, and I will start with the most important one which is the mindset if you get this mindset right you'll absolutely succeed and you'll absolutely get that first developer job and the second and the third and if you decide that you don't want to be a developer in the future and you want to become a freelance painter you can apply the same strategies to become a successful painter as well the biggest problem that i see with uh, developers especially juniors is that you are too shy Essentially, what happens is that when you're a developer, you are technically a technician, let's say, okay? And you can replace developer with a mechanic, with painter, with musician, it doesn't even matter, right? The idea is that me and you, when we went through the school system, we were told to shut up. We were told to not be loud, we were told to not stand out, we were told to stay in our place and, uh, you know, be average like the rest of the people. And this mindset is the problem that is gonna stop you from getting that first developer job. What you need to understand is that when you want to get a job, you need to become a marketer and a salesperson instead of a developer. Everyone can learn how to code. Everyone can learn how to be a musician. Everyone can learn how to be a painter. Everyone can learn how to be a marketer, okay? Not many know how to sell themselves. The first step to be able to actually make this transition from, you know, whatever you're doing right now, maybe you're a mechanic to developer, is to understand that learning to code and building applications, it's a skill set, and selling yourself to others is another skill set. I have noticed this hundreds of times with my clients in my Developer Pro program, that, you know, even the best developers, when they get to the job search part of the process, they completely lose it, and some of them, actually majority of them, give up because they do not understand that learning how to get a job is a skill set in its own. It doesn't matter how good you are as a developer, you will start from zero when you want to get this first job. You need to start from zero and you need to learn how to deal with rejections, okay? And you need to understand that rejections are not personal. They are just rejecting your skill set because your skill set doesn't match what they are looking for. That could be one thing. Let's say you are looking to get married, okay? And you have certain traits, certain characteristics that you are looking for in a woman or in a man. You are trying to vet as many people and you are trying to put as many people through this filter and see if they match your expectations. And most people do not fit those expectations. And that's kind of the case for you as well. Do not take these rejections personally and start thinking that you are here to sell yourself and you have to learn how to sell yourself. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is like, what are the requirements for you to get a developer job? If you look on any job boards, you'll see that there are no junior developer jobs available because nobody wants to hire juniors. Essentially, you will have to get a mid-level position or senior level position. When I got my first job, I also applied to senior developer positions and that's how I got my first job. It doesn't matter if they required three years of experience or five or 10 or 15, I was just pressing send, you know, pressing apply. Or in your case, you might have to connect with recruiters and talk to them. These companies are run by people and people are extremely flexible if you are the right candidate or if they feel like you have the right mindset, which is a can-do attitude. If you have the right technical skill set, then people will actually overlook the fact that you do not have 25 years of experience in a particular uh, language or library. Also, in order for you to make sure that you can actually get this developer job, you need to have a very strong portfolio or at least you should have one very strong project that actually shows that you are able to create beautiful looking applications, applications that have a lot of features and applications that work the same as other applications. So you need to make sure that the user experience is actually nailed. Otherwise, 
you will look like you need a lot of training and companies and people do not want to spend money and time on training you. So your portfolio and the projects that you have in your portfolio are extremely important, more important than ever. Nowadays, people have worse projects than uh, back when I was trying to get a job. I don't understand why, probably because there is too much information, too much noise. But at the same time, you guys right now have the easiest time when it comes to building a very sick application. You have so much inspiration, so many resources that are out there. You can buy teams, you can buy courses, you have AI. You literally have no excuses. You just need to sit down on your chair and actually build something impressive for a few months and then you will be successful. I want to talk about how you can actually stand out in the job market. So there are two schools of thought when it comes to applying to jobs and securing interviews. There is the mass application school of thought, which is all about volume. So you should apply to as many jobs as possible. And then we have the quality or the networking school of thought where you connect with relevant people from companies that are currently hiring and uh, you try to convince them to get you uh, an interview and then if you're good enough you'll pass the interviews and then you'll get an offer. I know there are gurus out there that say networking is the best and you should only do networking and then there are some other gurus out there that say uh, job applications are the best you just need to have the right resume and I am agreeing with both. Both of these strategies are great. What you need to figure out is which one can you do most of on a consistent basis. If you do not like to talk to people for whatever reason, maybe you are a bit more introverted, maybe you don't like uh, LinkedIn, maybe you don't like Twitter, you want to be more of a private person, then you should just apply to job. So you should make some time in your day where you listen to a podcast or you watch a Netflix show. Like for example, I watch Drive to Survive right now. I just finished it. You just put your show on the left side of the screen and then on the right side, you just click apply, apply, apply. You have to just switch your brain off from what you're doing and then just do it. Things that you can work on are your resume. So there are multiple services out there online where you can figure out, okay, maybe this guy says that I should make my resume in this way. So then for one or two weeks, you will test out a resume made by this person A. Then you will see the numbers that you're getting. Maybe you are getting some callbacks, maybe you managed to score an interview and whatnot. Okay, cool, that's fine. Then you are gonna try another type of resume and then you're gonna compare the data between these two resumes and then you will try to figure out which resume brings you the most positive replies. It can be recruiter calls or interviews and whatnot. And then you double down on that. I would have this uh, scientific approach and I would try to remove my emotions from the process and I would just try to be a savage, try to push as much out there uh, have my volume as high as possible, okay? So that is the volume approach, it works. You just need to understand that if you play the volume game, you actually need a lot of volume. You cannot apply to five jobs a day or five jobs a week like I've seen with most people. You need to go like balls to the wall, okay? Then we have the networking side of things, which means connecting with people typically on LinkedIn and uh, you have to be a bit pushy with these people, okay? People have lives. Even though they saw your message, they might not reply to it. So you need to make sure that you are following up with these people at least three times. So let's say you contact John. You say, hey John, I saw that you have an open position at uh, X company. I would love to get some insights about how it is working there because I'm thinking about applying. Okay, so John is probably gonna ignore your message. Not because he's an asshole, but because John has other stuff to do than to reply to your message and probably other people are bombarding John with messages. But what other people are not doing because of their bad mindset, because they were taught to never stand out, to not be pushy, to not be loud, they will not follow up with John. So your opportunity here is to follow up at least three times. Hey John, just uh, wondering if you saw my message. You wait two more days and then you say, hey John, just bumping this up in case a seagull stole your phone. And the third time after three days, you will send maybe a meme, you know, a personalized meme with John or whatever. You have to be a bit creative, but you send the first message on Monday, you wait two days, two business days, then you send the second follow-up, the first follow-up message, then you wait another two days, two business days, 
and uh, you send the second follow-on message and then you wait another three business days and then you send the third follow-on message. This is the structure that I would follow. If you connect with 100 people a week, you should have enough leads to be able to generate interviews for yourself. If you want to go ballistic, what you can do is have two or three LinkedIn accounts that you can use to network. That is totally fine. Nobody's gonna catch you, nobody's gonna judge you. Recruiters are doing this. People who are selling stuff online are doing this. They have multiple accounts. You just need to learn how to think like a salesperson, like a marketer. Because if you want to make money, you need to understand that the most important skill that you can learn nowadays is how to sell yourself. Now, in my opinion, the skills that you need to be able to make this career change in 2025 and beyond are the following. You should become a full stack developer. You can start with the front end, which is what most people do. And you have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Next.js. Then you learn TypeScript. Then you learn Tailwind, okay? Ideally, you will know some sort of charting library like Chart.js or Recharts. Maybe a state management library like Redux or Zustand, there are so many out there. Just do a quick LinkedIn search and see uh, which one of these state management libraries appear the most in the job descriptions and then learn that. On the backend side, you should learn Node.js, Express, Postgres, and uh, you should be Gucci. Now, another set of skills that you need to learn are soft skills. Soft skills are your weapon when it comes to standing out because you'll have interviews with people. You need to make sure that you leave a good impression on them, that you know how to deliver a message, that you know how to explain in a pretty way what the difference between var, let and const are. What are the differences between this? Maybe I messed up and I fucked up my communication right now. But essentially you'll be working with people, so you need to learn how to communicate effectively. And uh, maybe you want to get a raise at some point. Well, you need to learn how to play the office games and figure out how you can put yourself on uh, the list of people who will get promotions. Or maybe you want to convince people that a certain feature is not good, you know, and then you need to explain why that feature is not good. So you need to learn how to explain technical things to non-technical people. These things are extremely important, again, because they are soft skills they can be trained. In my coaching program, we do this in the interview prep call, and we have this thing called the team project where people are working on a very big application for a very long period of time. And that's where they can develop these soft skills and not just their technical skills. And by the way, this team project is what helps my students stand out in the job market because everyone has a portfolio, while my students have this big application that is used as uh, job experience in the resume. If you're in a position where you want to learn how to code and you want to make this transition, maybe you are a beginner or maybe you've been trying to learn how to code for some time and maybe you've been applying for hundreds and hundreds of positions with no luck whatsoever, that's because you are lacking in technical skills and soft skills. In my mentorship program, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to nail these two types of skills down. And uh, all you have to do if you are interested in learning how this works is to click on the first link in the description and apply a call with me or someone from my team and then we'll show you exactly how this whole process works because it's pretty much guaranteed. You just have to do the work. I have done all the hard parts for you. You just have to show up, implement what I'm gonna teach you. Of course, it's gonna be hard work. It's not gonna be easy, but compared to the regular person who is trying to land a job in tech, you'll be like flying around them. You'll be running circles around them, okay? So if you're interested in that, click on the first link in the description and apply for your free call. When can you start to look for a job? This advice is gonna be different based on your personality. Apply to jobs when you feel like you're ready. And what do I mean by that? You'll never be ready. There is no moment in time where you'll be like, okay, I have arrived, I am here and uh, I'm really good at coding. That is never going to happen. I was humbled even in my fifth year as a developer by being next to really smart developers. I managed to learn a lot of things from them, but that's when I realized like, I don't know everything and it's never going to happen where I'll be like, okay, I know everything. It's impossible, it's literally impossible. But there will be a moment in time in your career as you are training yourself to become a developer where you will say that, okay, I'm feeling comfortable, okay? I feel confident in what I'm doing. And this is, again, very different from person to person. Whenever you feel like you're ready, I think that's when you should start to apply. 
in my opinion, you shouldn't start applying to jobs if your resume has a weather app or an e-commerce website or a Pokemon search application or any kind of application that took you less than two, three weeks to build. I don't think you're ready. I think you should build at least a big project to make sure that you really get the experience to make sure that you really know how to do the basic stuff really well. Now, another question that I'm getting asked quite a lot is, can you work remote from another company? As you may or may not know, I had jobs where I was working in London officially, but then I was living in Czech Republic, or I had a job in Czech Republic, but I was living in Croatia or Poland. So I was able to take my work in another country. Back in my day, because I'm a dinosaur when it comes to this, uh, it used to be harder. I used to spend the first year in the office and prove myself, prove to people that I'm actually good, that they can actually deliver and I can, they can rely on me. And after that, I told them that I want to go for a short trip of six to 12 months somewhere else. And uh, the second time when I've, when I've done this, I was actually working fully remote and I literally just left. I didn't ask anyone because I wasn't even going to the office which is gonna be the case for most of you. Your main priority shouldn't be leaving to another country as soon as you get your first job, but your main priority should be delivering value to your company. At the end of the day, these businesses rely on you. They, they have this money and uh, this money is not growing from trees and they are coming from shareholders, from investors, from people who are buying stocks and whatnot. Just don't take the piece out of your work and try to do your best work for yourself because that's gonna be your resume. The better you get at your job, the better you get. And this is gonna give you leverage when it comes to negotiating a higher salary, maybe working from another country. What if I'm located in Europe? Can I get a job in the US? And I would say absolutely not. And uh, there are a few reasons for why that might happen. First of all, the most obvious one is the taxation. Why would someone take you from Germany to work for a US company? There is enough talent there and you have to be really, 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 really good. Deserve them to bother for you because, you know, being a salary employee when you're in Europe is very different than you know, hiring someone from the US. It's, it's some, something very basic. What you can do is if you are really good and you are creating a brand online on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and you make connections and whatnot, in time, after one or two or three years, if you are consistently pushing content, whatnot, people will get to know you, will build a network. So that can happen. Another reason why people might not want to do that is because of time zone. London and New York, there are five hours between Warsaw and I don't know, LA, I think there are 13 hours or something like that, 10 hours. So the time zone difference doesn't make sense. It's gonna be very hard to communicate with people that are on the other side of the world. Again, what I want you to take from this video is that getting a job is a skill set in itself. You should apply even if you don't feel qualified to get that first developer job uh, because you will learn on the spot, especially if you learn how to learn. Networking is a skill that at some point in your life you need to unlock. I used to be the guy that said uh, networking is for losers, posting content on LinkedIn is for losers. And to a certain extent, I agree with it, especially with how most people are doing it. But if you have value to deliver to the world and you're not just talking about you know calculators and things like that like what most junior developers are talking about which is understandable they are juniors but if you get to a point in your career when you get really good at what you're doing then uh, talking about your work and whatnot is going to build you the network which is going to get you a lot of opportunities in the future and yeah these are my tips when it comes to landing the first developer job and if you want me to help you again there is a link in the description. You can apply for the mentorship. Everything is solved. The projects, the theory, the community aspect, the interview preparation calls, the coaching calls, everything has been solved for you. All you have to do is come in and do the work. If you're interested in that, click on the first link in the description, check out the page. And if you like what you see there, if you like the testimonials, then apply for a free call with either me or someone from my team. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.